Well, here we are. Another week of indoor and arena football done and over with. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that do watch this channel. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? There probably are some mothers that watch this channel. That's good. Hope you all had a great Sunday. Hopefully we all had a great weekend of watching so much indoor and arena football, so much delicious content coming down the pipes as we head into another week. This week is over. Now we head into a new one. So the only NAL game that happened was Orlando getting beat up by Carolina. Really intriguing game because my quarter, Darius Prince, a whole bunch of other guys from the Empire, they joined Orlando in you know, quarters like, okay, look, I know we, we, you know, me and AB, we had our differences, but just, you know, keep supporting the team up in New York. Just keep supporting the Albany Empire. Just keep supporting them. Quarter City also could come back. So, you know, there was an interview with him. He said he could come back. We'll find out as time progresses. What, what that entails. Uh, the Von Schillers, there is an article out about them. You know, they also own the Empire, but it's like a 5% stake, remember? So, AB's camp is treating it like, it's a, like they own 100% of it. So, it's been a little bit rough for them. Hopefully, they get it worked out. And again, you know, like, now, there was the whole concern about, you know, well, well the NAL is not doing this and, you know, yada, 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 and AB is doing this and such and such, and Chris Seep reads all this and yada, yada, yada. That wasn't even the case at all. You know, people kind of overreact. Chris Seep even said, hey, AB paid the bills. AB did what he needed to do. Everything's fine. So, again, I, I when that statement came out, you know, a, a few a week or uh, like a week or two ago, I was like, okay, it is what it is. Can't really, can't really say anything about it. You know, it is what it is. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, oh yeah, the Sharks, they played, they didn't play an NAL game this week. They played a game against the flagship team of the EIF, the Southern Steam. More on the EIF in a moment. We just got some breaking news about them. Um, it was a game for charity and the kids and stuff like that. Jacksonville easily took care of business, 36 to nothing. There's some other things I've forgotten about. You know, Fayetteville's still looking for co-owners. Rob Storm's got a case of litigation. Not much to say about Storm's litigation because, A, there's nothing about it really that I can say. And, B, that's his business, you know, you know the league had, you know, people, fans have been bringing up that case, but again, there's nothing really about it right now or anything really to say about it right now that could even be talked about. So there you have the standings in the in the NAL right now. It's still San Antonio, Jacksonville, Carolina, and Fayetteville at the top. In the IFL, pretty much the same thing, you know, Things still kind of hold serve as far as the standings go. The scores do not hold serve, though. Um, you have Quad City beating Sioux Falls pretty badly. I mean, Sioux Falls, you know, they they can't kick. You know, there's, there's a whole lot of things going on that Green Bay-San Diego game in which, you know, I mean, there was a lot of chippiness. Multiple people from San Diego side of things got ejected. Joey Boadonna, you know, Good, good friend of ours in the in the Discord. He was the play-by-play -play announcer for the Blizzard. He, even he was mesmerized, or most, or, or more so shocked at the chippiness in this Green Bay San Diego game, which was at three o'clock in the afternoon for some reason um, due to a concert. But it is what it is. You know, he would like that game to be, you know, in the evening. But hey. Rare daytime Saturday 
football, rare daytime Saturday football in in this game. So, and then the rest of the games from that Saturday night, Massachusetts getting beat up by Iowa. I don't think anybody expected that. Tucson, you know, they had to come back late. They still could beat Duke City, Frisco in a game with Tulsa that was completely unexpected. You know, like the fighters got out by the skin of their teeth. Bay Area lost to Naz in a low-scoring, you know, late game. And then Vegas beat Arizona. Very surprising to see. Even Drew Powell came back. You know, very surprising to see Arizona at 3-4. and four. And you see a whole glut of teams in the West at 3-4. and four. Vegas, Duke City, Arizona, San Diego, of course, at 2-5. and five. Despite the fact that Nate Davis is on that team now. And then in the East, it's still the same thing. It's going to be... It's going to be a combination of Frisco, Quad City, Mass, and Sioux Falls at the top right now. Green Bay still trailing along behind Massachusetts and Sioux Falls with Tulsa and Iowa bringing up the rear, both at 1-6. and six. Now, CIF. Well, you have our, we, we have our six playoff teams. I know. It took this long, but we have our six playoff teams as the Southwest Kansas Storm clinched by barely getting by Rapid City Saturday night. And the game they have left is against the Topeka Tropics. So Topeka 0-9, Rapid City 0-9. Not a good look. It, I mean, Southwest Kansas was going to clinch regardless you know, it was either it was either one of Topeka losers or, or they just beat Rapid City. And, you know, Southwest Kansas, they they beat they beat Rapid City. Took care of that. No. Rapid City and Topeka have one more opportunity. They remember they don't play each other for some dumb reason. These two teams did not play each other. But both these teams have one more opportunity for a win, and we'll see if they can get it. Omaha still unbeaten. They beat up on Topeka, of course, 6-6-13, and a billing surprise Gillette. So that kind of threw things into a wrench. We know Gillette will have a playoff game at home. The problem is, is that we don't know where they will end up as Billings, Sioux City, Salina, and Gillette are all battling it out for seeding at this point. The one is clinched. The sixth seed is clinched. So Omaha, they have home field advantage. Southwest Kansas Storm is traveling somewhere. Will it be... Will it be, you know, will it be Salina? Will it be Sioux City? Will it be Gillette? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Because Sioux City has two games left. Salina has two games left. Gillette only has one. Billings only has one. Billings may be stuck at the five. They could move up to the four, depending on results. So, you know, who knows? I think, you know, maybe that matchup between Sioux City and Billings may be locked in regardless. Who knows? Um, Gillette, Salina, and Sioux City are going to be the three that are going to be more interesting going off top. As Salina has games against both Sioux City and Gillette. Sioux City this upcoming Saturday. And then Gillette on the final day of the CIF regular season, May 27th. So the battle for the two seed is going to be interesting. Going to be one hell of a fight. We'll see what happens there in the CIF. And then everybody else, the AAL2 finally got those scores for those games. So Maryland Eagles, they beat Eastern Shore 31-22. Um, the Maryland Warriors, they pitched a shutout against the Houston Maulers. Pitched a shutout 40 to nothing, And then Jersey 33, United Firepower 12. So there's that. The AAL2 still kicking along. There was a United Firepower live stream. Couldn't really tell what the score was, so I just kind of backed out of it. So everybody else, AWFC, 
Cali Gold, who haven't they played one game against the Idaho Horsemen. They said, "No, we're not. We're not coming back to play Wenatchee." So they backed out of that game, and Wenatchee said, "We're just not going to have a game this week." So um, Wenatchee will resume play in June, if I'm not mistaken, because they played Idaho twice already, I think, and. All their games left are against either Oregon or Sid City. Um, Idaho, on the other hand, they have they have they have some they have some they they have some unfinished business. They beat up on Oregon 69-42. So there's that. So the AWC is still interesting with the three teams that they do have. But again, not a lot of intrigue right now because there's still a whole lot of you know, non-conference games to get off the chest of these three teams. And the GLAA or the GLAF, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be West Michigan versus Southern Michigan in the championship game on May 20th at Trinity Health Arena at about, what, 7 o'clock Central Time. So there's that. That's going to be interesting. We don't have to talk about this league anymore because I hope all the other teams fold I hope it's just West Michigan that decides to finally just move on up to a league that's way more competitive than this because I'm tired. I'm so tired of West Michigan playing scrubs. Um, The AIFA. Well, another week of insanity in this league because truly the AL's true successor because the Mississippi Raiders said, we're not playing the Dallas Falcons tonight. I know y'all showed up, but we're not playing. So I believe there was a fine sent out to Mississippi that says, hey, you know, y'all y'all should have played. You didn't play. Here's a fine. Um, the Raiders then say, you know, they say on their YouTube page that they were going to play the Carolina Predators on a Monday night. And I'm thinking, like, that, that graphic is wrong. That said, there's no such thing as a Sunday, May 15th. Today is May the 14th. Today is Sunday. So they must have meant Monday. And keep in mind that Carolina, they just played Peach State on Saturday. And we'll talk about Peach State in a moment. But, you know, rare form for the Mississippi Raiders. Rare form of not committing to your obligations of playing a game, of being legitimate and playing the game. Columbus Lions, they rolled out their new, you know, production, you know, looked very much better. For the most part, they their, their, steam, their, their stream still glitched out and crashed, but it came back. And even though South Florida had 14 players with them, commendable effort. Because 7356 is a lot closer than it needs to be with a team that just had 14 players. I want to get that in your heads. That Avion Hill brought 14 players down to Columbus, Georgia. And then the Peach State Cats, they have joined the AIFA. They have joined it, officially announced via their Instagram. And we'll look at their, we'll look at the remaining schedule for them in just a minute, which leaves the EIF with just two teams and there's just two games left. Remember, um, somebody, somebody in the EIF is going to play against a AIFA opponent. I don't know which of these two teams are, I believe, or somebody else. I can't remember what what it was, but I have to look over it again. But there's just two games left in the EIF, and there's just two teams left. Everybody else backed out hasn't played, or probably folded. So, yeah, EIF is dying, finally. It took it took a long time to kill this league, but it's finally dying. Thank goodness. And the AIFA's newest member has this remaining schedule with the Carolina Predators, the Alabama Empire, who, remember, backed out of a league themselves, the South Florida Thunder, who they will take on, at home, and then June 10th, another game against the Alabama Empire. They played Carolina once already. Played, I, I don't know if they played Alabama Empire yet, 
Um, I did the Columbus Lions, you know. So there's that. That's via Instagram. There's, you know, that Peach Day Cats. You guys are moving on up, and hopefully y'all get, you know, a better arena because I don't want y'all to be playing inside of a sockplex, you know. Don't this team's been around for a little bit and they've been playing inside soccer plexes pretty much the entire time. You know, that same red and black, you know, soccer plex. Yeah. Time to get out of that. It's time to move on up. So move on up. It's something, something bigger. And this, this definitely is a step up. It's kind of a sideways step because the AIFA is, not the greatest run league in the world, but it's a step in the right direction because they have a legitimate team in Peach State that has guys getting signed up to higher leagues, you know, pretty much every pretty much every season. I mean, you know, it, it, like every every other week, every season type thing. So yeah, there's that. So I'm gonna get on skedaddle, and we're gonna wait until May 21st for the next one. So. See you all next Sunday because Friday night we have an NAL game. Saturday is going to be bookended with CIF, NAL, and IFL action along with whatever, you know, else comes up. You know, the GLAA championship and then, you know, some other stuff. And then the 21st, that Sunday, we we bookend it with an IFL matchup. And that means that this weekend into football will be back Around the same time, you know, next Sunday. So stick around. Um, that's basically it. I'll see you all next week.